Sometimes the things that we want to remember, we forget. Well, at the same time, the things that we're trying to forget, that's what we remember. I, the Spirit of Phillips, with 10 minute toward day number three, the tour portion, Sav, meaning command. Let's go continuing in Leviticus chapter number six and begin reading with verse 14. And this is the Torah of the grain offering. This is called the Mika. The grain offering, the sons of Aaron shall bring it near before Yahweh in front of the slaughter place and shall take from it with his hand from the fine flour of the grain offering and from its oil and all the frankincense which is on the grain offering and shall burn it on the slaughter place for a sweet fragrance as a remembrance portion to Yahweh. Then Aaron and his sons eat the rest of it. It is eaten with unleavened bread as in the set-apart place. They eat it in the courtyard of the tent of appointment. It is not baked with leaven. I am giving it to them as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most set apart like the sin offering and like the guilt offering. And so this minka, a grain offering, there's no blood being shed here. This is fine flour that has been ground up. It has no leaven added to it, no honey added to it. It is uh, sprinkled with frankincense and it's given to the priest who takes, Rashi says, three fingers full of it, and puts it on the altar. What is this all about? It's interesting that in verse number 14, if we go back and look at that again, the Hebrew phrasing here literally reads, this is the Torah instructions of the gift we could put in brackets here, of man himself. This is the Torah instructions of the gift drawing her. The word here is atah, A-T-A-H, transliteration, atah. It has a feminine ending. So the gift is of the man bringing her or drawing her near by the sons of Aaron. And here's another interesting part of this. Panim, faces to the faces of Yahweh, and again the word panim, to the faces of the altar. Strange wording. What is it saying to us? Well, in my understanding, the minka is that which we bring as a remembrance. The word here is askara, A Z K. A R A H, Askara. It's from the word Askar, meaning to remember. It's a memorial. What are we remembering? So, as we bring the grain, we are remembering the faces of Yah as He has revealed Himself. Men will joke about the multiple personalities that their spouse, their wife has. Um, it, it's funny and it's humorous, but the reality is we all have a different face. We all have different versions of ourselves. There is this pleasant, congenial, polite version that we put on in public. There is this frustrated, angry, sometimes... Uh, hard to get along with version that may be more behind the scenes. There is a version we are at work. There's a version we are at home. It depends on our environment. It, it depends on who we are with. It depends on how we're feeling. All of these have factors about who we are and how we present ourselves. So, Let's, uh, let's give one another a little bit of a break here. We all have attitudes and presentations. Yah, on the other hand, it's not that he has multiple personalities or multiple hats that he wears, so to speak. It's that there are more characteristics, more realities, more manifestations, more revelations about him than what we have previously understood. Life experiences are given to us so that we reach out for him, we feel for him, we learn of him, and he reveals himself to us. When we're sick, he's our healer. 
When we are in need of finance, he is our supply. When we are not understanding and struggling to grasp what the reality of a situation is, he is our wisdom and our insight. When we're brokenhearted, he is our comforter. There are multiple faces of the Most High as he reveals himself. And so when we bring this grain offering to the altar, we're bringing it, it says, of the man himself. We're bringing it out of our life experiences. But it says of her. The the feminine aspect of this would reference then the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. It is commonly uh, done to reference the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and more a masculine understanding. But the reality of Hebrew is that the Ruach is feminine. It has the nurturing, mothering, caregiving, undergirding, comforting qualities that Yah reveals of himself. And so we're talking about man from his own spirit, out of the depths of who he is inwardly. He brings this, and he remembers, Oh, Yah, you've comforted me as my comforter. You have delivered me because you are my deliverer. You have broken my chains, Oh, Yah, because you are he who holds the keys. Over and over again, we find that the Father reveals himself to us and these multifaceted revelations. And so we bring from our spirit a grain offering saying, you've nurtured me. Now grain here, not having any leaven in it, is matzah. It's it's unleavened bread. Mansa references that initial stage of our redemption. At Pesach or Passover, we eat unleavened bread, and we do so for the, the feast of uh, Matzah's duration. It's talking about how we have been delivered, how we have been, in our understanding, born again. The old man is dead. There's a new man in its place. Even after the days of eating Matzah are over, We still have the days of counting the Omer where we are counting toward Shavuot or Pentecost as it's commonly called. And here at Pentecost or Shavuot, we offer up leavened bread. We wave leavened king's bread before our our Heavenly Father saying we have come to the place of spiritual infilling. There's life in us. There's flavor in us. There's this volume that has been achieved in us. But what's interesting is that matzah, though it doesn't have the flavorful qualities to it, and though we would probably prefer yeasted bread, matzah will endure. Matzah doesn't go corrupt on us. Yeasted bread, you give it long enough, it'll start getting, uh, Uh, producing mold spores, it'll decay. So the life in the spirit has to be constantly renewed, 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 renewed. But our salvation, our redemption, is something that we take joy in because it is a said and done fact. We have been redeemed. And with joy, we draw from the waters of the well of our salvation. Out of that, then, we come before him remembering all the great qualities, characteristics, and revelations that Yah has manifested to us. Then it says the faces of the altar. The altar has more than one face for us. That is, the altar references more than one sacrifice. The altar is visited again and again and again because we have to take the old man and put him on that altar and tell him, you're not getting up. You're going to be consumed. You're not going to rule over me today. I've been redeemed. I know who my master is. He's revealed himself to me, and I have overcome you. So out of the depths, we give our worship to the Most High today, praising for who he is and for what he has done. 
I'll see you again tomorrow. To then, shalom. Shalom.